Good morning, good morning, good morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As we come to celebrate Homecoming 2020 for Second Baptist Church, thank you for joining us. Let us begin our worship experience. Good morning, Facebook family. It's so good to see you, and it's so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. My grandfather used to give me a lot of old sayings. He shared this with me. He said, it's better to be seen than to be viewed. But most of all, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And I'm glad to be here just to share with you on this day. And I'm going to ask you a question. Are you still here? Bless you. Heartaches. I've had my share of heartaches, but I'm still here, oh yeah. Trouble, I've seen my share of troubles, but I'm still here, thank you Lord, oh yeah. Bruises, I've taken my lumps and bruises, but I'm still here Thank you, Lord Loneliness I've had my share of loneliness But I'm still here Oh, Lord I've made it through Another day's journey God kept me here, yes he did, I've made it through another day's journey, God kept me here, let me sing that other verse, listen, lied on, many times I've been lied on, but I'm still here. Thank you, Jesus. Burdens, I've had to face so many burdens, but I'm still here. Ooh, dark days, I've had my share of dark days, but I'm still here. Are you still here today? Oh, Lord. Disappointments, I've had so many disappointments, but I'm still here. You know why? Through it all, I've made it through another day's journey. God kept me here. Yes, He did. Oh, I've Another day's journey, God kept me here. Listen, mm -hmm. it's by the grace of God that I'm still here today. He was always been there, no matter what came my way, a very present help in my time of need standing right there or just to see about me I've made it through another day's journey oh God kept me here yes he did yes he did yes he did I've made it through another day's journey God kept me here. Mm -hmm. I've made it. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. Tears in my eyes. I made it. I made it. 
I've made it. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. Sleepless nights. Pastor had some sleepless nights. I've made it. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. We thank you for this anniversary, Lord. We thank you. We've made it. Yes, we've made it. We're still here. Dark days, tearful nights, but we made it, yeah. We've made it. Yes, we've made it. We're still here. God bless you. Yes, we are here. Let us pray. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us now till we won't no more. Now may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. And all of God's children said, Amen and Amen. We are privileged today to come before you again live stream here from the main sanctuary, 5100 West 100 Road, Chester, Virginia, 23831. I want to thank Deacon Earl Fisher again for availing himself to come this morning to lead us and to prepare our hearts for this moment in light of others, uh, Minister of Music, Dr. Honorable Corey Brown. Let's give it up. One of the finest musicians in all the world. Yeah, we can uh, lay, lay claim of him. Yeah, we want to identify. And then we are grateful for Mr. John Sinkler, who is operating the sound and media technology. And suddenly, last but not least, to my lovely wife, uh, God has just blessed us to be together. And I'm, I'm so in love with her. And to God be the glory for the great things he has done. Earl, you blessed us. You took us back. And the fact that God has been with us down through the years and we are still here, which is a testament of God's continuous love and mercy toward us, even sometime when we don't realize it. Today, it is my hope to spend a little time talking to you today relative to this homecoming reflection, its homecoming observance of Second Baptist Church uh, unlike before, uh, homecoming for us uh, in the typical uh, contemporary uh, black church, uh, homecoming, I must admit, is nothing like I remembered back in the day growing up in a place called Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina. And it was in those formative years that I was able to reflect back to such churches that uh, was Prime, uh, Quonky Baptist Church, Highway 48, Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina, during that time, was under the pastoral ship of Reverend R.H. Kidd, a uh, proud giant in our community. It was churches like Quonky Baptist Church that I remember what homecoming looked like back in the day. And there is another church I want to make mention of, Simon Grove Baptist Church, uh, Pastor Reverend George Battle. It was in those formative years that I grew up understanding what homecoming was, and that really primarily meant that we would have our morning worship. Then following the morning worship, already folk outside of the church have already pulled up their vehicles, and there were those prefabricated tables that was affixed between two trees, and there was some boundary that uh, lifted some of the pressure from in between, and somehow there was a fabricated long table outside where many folk come early and lay their food, their 
collard greens and ham hocks and salads and all the other pies and cakes and so much of us to eat that it was moments like that. That's what homecoming was, that when we would come together and they lay out a spread, not only was it on the table, but folk was, can I use the word, hashing up their boot. <laughs> you know what, some of y'all don't know nothing about that there. Uh, you placed a blanket over the hood and laid a blanket and put all of the cakes and the desserts on the hood. And this was a reflective moment for me. This is what homecoming looked like for me. And during the course of that day, not only we would eat, but we'd go back to service. And then that week, we would have revival. That was homecoming to me. But might I add that it ain't nothing like it is no more. I understand back in the day when there were those who were migrated north to get better jobs from the south. And that was a monumental push for people to come back home in what we call quote-unquote homecoming because it was then that these folk who had migrated to the north and became industrialized and making more money, when they decided to come home for the week for the revival, they brought some with them. And that's one of the reasons why I don't believe that homecoming is going nowhere. It may be different, but somehow we have to revamp new ways and new opportunities opportunities to, to reflect and appreciate from whence we have come. And so today, permit me, after sharing with you my uh, early on experience as it relates to homecoming, but today in this new era, in this corona era, there's a, there's a difference even in now being able to come back to church. So what do we say in this live stream time? What do we say in these few moments that have been allotted unto us that we might be faithful into the reflecting of our homecoming as we used to know it and now understand in this uh, pandemic what God might be saying now relative to homecoming. I'm glad you asked. It is in the text of Luke's gospel chapter 15 that I would like to review some aspects of it so that we might gain footage for a conversation with the new norm, with the new reality that God has destined for us to understand what it really means to come back home. It is the, in this text that there is three dimensional, there are three areas that would categorize an area for conversation conversation and discussion today. If you will indulge me for the next few moments in Luke's gospel chapter 15, the first part of Luke's gospel talks about a lost sheep. The second part of Luke's gospel talks about a lost coin. But the third part of Luke's gospel talks about a lost son. It is interesting to me how we have been able to review the text and how familiar I have been with the text. But in the nuances of God, when we look to study and we look for certain words to step out and stand out in our exegetical review in preparation to come on this milestone, to come on this another year in which God has afforded the people of God at Second Baptist to bind together one more time that we might celebrate one more time that he's blessed us long enough that we can come to a place to say this is another year and unlike ever before this week will be a promising week a week that we would hear messages a series of messages that would equip us and cause us to want to live out the true meaning of what it means to be saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost nonetheless I just want to leave you for a few moments I want to share a few tidbits of nuggets with you in light of what then now can we appreciate about homecoming and I believe the story of Luke's gospel chapter 15 parenthetically speaks to the idea that when we think about homecoming it is really not about a ministry or church place where we gather for food but rather a moment that we might get to know him a moment that we might hear freshly his word that will come from heaven that will help us to lead better lives and to do greater things in the kingdom of God. I don't believe there are many other texts that resides in the Holy Writ, but it is this one that I believe that has offered me the greatest opportunity and the greatest autonomy to discuss the realities of the text as it relates to us as a people of fallen humanity. Now, what can God do or what is God saying in order that we might be restored? He's already completed the finished work. He 
died on Calvary. The blood that runs down from Aaron's beard, uh, down from Calvary, it, it came down. It, it's, it, it, it's there for you and me. It's there so that we might live. It's there so that we might be saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. The blood of Jesus streams down from the cross. So what does it mean? To know what homecoming is in this era, in this pandemic. Luke helps us to understand very clear that according to Luke's gospel chapter 15, the first uh, scenarios that we look at, we find the lost sheep. Then we find the lost coin. Each of these items was or uh, did not uh, in and of themselves was to blame for not necessarily being unaccounted for. When we considered the sheep, uh, the possibility of the sheep meandering and finds himself afar from the fold. And then like precious wolves and items that would come to slay us and destroy us, he found himself meandering and he found himself on the backside of the, of the field uh, there where they were grazing. And now Jesus uses this particular uh, scenario, this narrative in painting a picture for us us who yet still exists, painting a picture for us who are the called out ones, painting a picture for us who yet still live, who live God, we live and move and have our being in him, the God who wants to introduce us to his care and his love for us. When we think about the lost sheep with no responsibility of its own in meandering, with the lost corn, with no responsibility of their own to be lost, but somehow they had been misappropriated and mismanaged by the owners of those who care for it. But in every instance of these two scenarios that the seeker took it upon themselves to look for that what was lost. And I'm feeling now that God is so concerned about humanity that he will do anything, he will create scenarios, he will create narratives in order to give a parable of understanding of how he feels about that what he has created. God loves us so much. He uses the lost sheep. When the sheep is found, the shepherd places it upon its shoulder and he comes back to everyone else and said, rejoice with me for that what was lost is now found. Let's have a party. It is consistent even with the woman who sweeps her house who has a corn and I don't know the corn could have been associated with some circular emblem that is worn around or on the top of their head and one of those corns she had ten but now she only have nine. Perhaps if not finding or looking for the corn it may be on the Jewish expectations or Judaism. It may sub suggest that she had been unfaithful because she no longer have the crowns complete around the diadem that she wears. And I've discovered that it was necessary for her to sweep her house diligently in order that she might find the corn. And then when she finds the corn, she rushes into the street and announces to everyone the corn that was lost is now found. Rejoice! with me, that she has found it, that she no longer had to be uh, ridiculed, that she no longer have to be subjected to suspicion of her infidelity of who she was as a woman. Oh God, God cares so much that he sets this text up because he wants us to understand more than coming to the building, oh God, that he is more concerned about the human soul. Can I go further? In the third segment of Luke's gospel, chapter 15, it is there that we come to this amazing discussion. Luke 15, verse number 20 and verse number 24. And what we have discovered in this text is that God loves us so much that he was willing to lay down his life and die for his friend. Unlike dealing with the sheep and the lost corn, uh, the father says to his prodigal son, who prematurely comes to daddy and asks his father for that what befalls him. 
And even though it was premature, like most of us, even before daddy has been uh, properly prepared by the mortuary affairs, before there could even be eating of some fried chicken after the funeral, the boy uh, presumptuously and prematurely comes to the daddy and say, Daddy, give me that what befalls me. It seemed like he at least could have waited to, to daddy uh, went on to sleep, but perhaps that was a custom, a Roman custom to allow and permit uh, uh, things like this to happen and for uh, that what has one would inherit that they can make a request uh, to receive it now. And daddy with no uh, dispute, daddy with no inquisitions of why you would ask this of me and daddy being, might I ask, a good daddy, a daddy who understands his children, a daddy who recognizes that he's not dealing with a lost sheep, a daddy who is not dealing with a lost corn, but a daddy who is dealing with a live human being, help me somebody today, that has his own will. To choose what they do or don't do. Daddy handled his son vicariously. Daddy handled his son with empathy. Daddy handled his son with care. He didn't just uh, resist the idea of giving it to him. He didn't argue with him. He just simply gave it to him. And the Bible said it wasn't long after that. He got the hopping in his steps. He, he moved out to a foreign land. And the Bible says he became a prodigal. He lived a life of riotous living. Some of us ought to be able to relate to that. We, we understand that we have not always been what we are. We, we, we have been up and we have been down. We have been in and been out. But when we look back over it all, God has kept us. And let, might we model today, because here it is. This daddy, he just simply waited and watched. Oh, God. He, he waited. And watch, because I believe it is here, parenthetically, God wants to draw our attention to the text as a metaphor or a typology of how he cares for us. And, and somehow this thing is always upon me when I think about the trilogy of God. When I, when I think about God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. When, when I think about God, ask Peter three times, do you love me? When, when I think about Luke's gospel, chapter 15, it comes three-dimensional. A lost sheep. A lost sheep. Corn. Oh, God help me. And now, a lost son. But God shows in the text that he does not deal with the lost son the way the lost sheep and the lost corn was dealt with. God here gives a typology and an analogy of how he cares for you and me. That this daddy is a replica or a, a, a sign of God or the deity of God. How some of us would have gave them what they wanted and let them go and not even thought about how are they going to do thereafter. But this father, knowing that, that life in and of itself has the greatest teacher. This father released his son to meander and live a life that is prodigal. Uh, this father, he didn't really get all up in antsy or upset about it. He just allowed the demonstration of his love to be carried out. And this son, this daddy, he didn't scorn him. He just simply... Day after day for some years went by. I'm sure he wondered how he was doing. One day daddy was sitting on the porch in the cool of the day. I believe daddy was having a cool glass of iced tea. And he was able in his failing of vision, he somehow saw a mirage one day. He had been praying for his son. I, I believe this daddy would get up early in the morning. And even though he didn't know where his son was, he would call on his name. He he would say to God, Father, I stretch my hands to thee, for it is no other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from us, Lord, we simply would not have anywhere else to go. So, Lord, be with my son. Help 
kept him wherever he might be. And one day this daddy was sitting on the porch and he saw something coming closer to him. He had always hoped and believed that when his son got to the right place, or might I use what the text says, he, when the son came to himself, as God will say, when we come to our senses, uh, he's right there to receive us as this father was waiting to receive his son. Good God, I'm to help me. I'm getting ready to wind this thing up. So the daddy, now his glass of tea has about uh, evaporated. <laughs> oh God. And while he could yet still see some, he saw a mirage, he saw an image from afar. Can you imagine on the cool of a day, daddy sitting on his porch, been praying for his son, waiting for him to come back home, and daddy never was really sure if his prayers was being answered, but somehow he had hope that it was, and one day he saw an image of his son, and as he moved closer to the house, I'm, you know, what, what's amazing to me is I've been looking at this for a long time. And I have resolved in daddy just sitting on the porch when he saw his son coming. But it jumped out at me, Earl. This time I've seen it like I never saw it before. If then this daddy is a metaphor of our God, when the idea is that we have been prodigal in our lifestyle, we have been prodigal in the way we have treated folk, we have been prodigal in how we have gotten along with folk. The daddy sees his son, and when the son gets close enough to daddy, the Bible says he leaps off the porch and he runs. Oh, God, help me. He runs. After all, he'd been waiting for him. He runs. After all, he'd been praying for him. He runs. After all, he knew that if his son would even think about coming back home, that he would be prepared to receive his son and greet him in love. That's homecoming right there. I don't know what else I got to say in the next few moments that I got your time. But that right there is the idea of what it means to have a homecoming or what does homecoming really mean. And I stopped by today to tell you, though there is no more pulling up on the campus and opening your trunk and laying food from left to right outside for us to meal. But homecoming today for all of us, especially in this shutdown moment, that homecoming for all of us can still be real. Homecoming for us can still be practical. Homecoming for us that we can still have a good meal. That homecoming for us is yet just to know uh, that my God lives. And the whole reason why we've come today to share with you from Luke's Gospel chapter 20, chapter 15, verse number 20 and 24. Because it speaks to the reality that God will wait on us as he waited for his son. But not only did he wait on him, he maintained a watchful eye. And when he saw what was remains of his son, he runs off the porch. The Bible says, uh, if I would use my own mind, he leaps up off of the porch because he was joyful of what he now sees. The Bible says that he, uh, he leaps off of the porch and he runs to his son. Yeah, can you see him now? And I'm glad that the father was so glad to see his son. And the Bible says that he, he wrapped his arm around him. Yeah, and he kissed him on his neck. Yeah, I believe that was penetratable right there. 
Yeah, I believe it was impacting right there. Yeah, I believe that something went through his whole body. Yeah, I believe that he began to have and to feel some emotional arousers. Yeah, because his daddy, he thought that his daddy was mad at him. He thought that he had took daddy's money and he had went around everywhere buying everybody what they wanted. And he thought his daddy was mad with him. But when he saw his daddy meet him uh, some way uh, from the porch, uh, he discovered that at that moment, uh, he says to daddy, Daddy, uh, forgive me uh, of my sins. I have sinned against you and I've sinned against God and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son but I'm glad that the Lord he has a way when we find ourselves in the place of a hog pen yeah we are hungry and we are destitute and we are perishing for a lack of love for a lack of resources, for a lack of attention. Yeah, and the Bible says that when this son, he came to himself. What the Bible says, when he came to his senses, that's like the Lord, he wait on all of us. Yeah, he comes see about us. Yeah, he comes checking on us. Yeah, he give us a chance to respond to his concern about it. He give us time to repent of our sin. Yeah, I know he'll do it, but I'm glad on this homecoming. Yeah, it may not be a festive meal that we have to celebrate this day, but we have an unadulterated, we have a resource, we have a good daddy, yeah, who reigns from on high. And I'm glad that when this boy, he came home, he took to his daddy, he said, Father, I have sinned against God, and I have sinned against you. And the father, being so empathetic, the father now being enthroned with the love and the return of his son. Yeah, this son said, Daddy, please forgive me. I found that there's more to eat here than I had out there in the world. But Daddy, I know you got servants that work around your farm. Yeah, that eats better than in a hog pen. Yeah, it was there that the young man, he came to his senses. He came to understand the Holy Ghost. It set right in and he said, I will arrive and I'll go to my father. But look what daddy did when daddy met him and kissed him on the neck. And the son was saying, daddy, forgive me. And while at the same time, daddy said, kill the fattest cat. Yeah, bring him a robe and put it around him. Yeah, bring him some shoes to wear on his feet. Yeah, daddy said, that's the least I can do with all of my slaves. I have provided for them too, but I'm glad that my son, he's come back home. He was barefooted. He was ragged. I suppose he wasn't smelling that good, but daddy, he still loved him. Yeah, daddy said, have a barbecue. Break out the rib. Break out the fried chicken. Yeah, we gonna have a Holy Ghost party cause my son who was once lost but now he found yeah he was blind 
but now he see, yeah, want to do it, then to do it. And all I've tried to tell you today, second back, uh, that God, my Father, he loves his creation. He loves humanity. He loves you and me. If we never have another traditional homecoming, let us always remember this unique and providential spiritual kingdom of God homecoming that when the, the prodigal son, he decides to come back home and his daddy was waiting and watching and to the son he came back home but now he alive a celebration because of this son who was once lost but now found and that's what the lord is saying to all of us we have been lost but we can be found that's what the lord that searches us out that's what the lord when he comes looking for us that's what the Lord is aiming for. That's what the Lord is trying to do for humanity. Yeah, that's what the Lord is trying to do for all of us. He want us oh, to come back home. What greater homecoming can it be than to come back home to a heavenly father that loves you and me so much that he was willing to die oh God for you and me alright somebody said don't become the, the weeping prophet now When I think of the goodness of Jesus and, and all he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. Lord, thank you for saving me. Corey, give me a little bit more. I'm still here. No, Earl, don't have to come. I just, just play it. I'm getting ready to go. I want to extend the invitation to whosoever will. If you are viewing us live stream today and you don't know Jesus, you've never accepted him as your personal savior. <laughs> He's waiting to receive you now. Don't let this moment pass you by. Tomorrow's not promised. And I believe greater days are ahead. I believe when we can resonate with this homecoming, divine, spiritual moment. God has greater things in store for the kingdom. Is there anybody who's listening, tuned in, and you're not saved, and you desire to be saved? Because God is our Heavenly Father, and He helps us to understand what it means to be able to go back to Him. He's not mad at what we've done. But he now sees us in the righteousness of his son. Will you come back? Will you be restored? Will you return with a changed heart and a changed mind? So that God might feed you fried chicken like you ain't never had before. Help me somebody. Thank you, God, for this another homecoming service. We honor you. We praise God for you. Thank you for this ministry, oh God, that you've given us. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. And might the love of God rest, rule, and abide with every pastor every ministry every church all over the land God is with us y'all 
I don't know when these doors will open again. But I'm all right until he says time to come back. But until then, we'll just keep on doing it like this. Come on in, Earl. Bring it on in a little bit. Just go on and holler. I'm about ready to let you go. Had my share of heartaches, but I'm still here. Thank you, Lord. Trouble, seen my share of trouble, but I'm still here. Bruises, I've taken my lumps and but I'm still here Ooh, Loneliness Had my share of loneliness But I'm still here Through it all I made it through Another day's journey God's kept us here Yes, you did. We've made it through another day's journey. God's kept us here. Peace until we meet again.